Have you ever been accused of being creepy, even though you're 100% sure you did nothing wrong? Have you ever seen a girl you really wanted to go talk to, but didn't because you were too scared of looking like a creep? If you'd like to know what the difference is between creepy and charming, this video today is for you. So to kick today's video off, I want to get something out of the way straight away. I've heard chatter before about guys saying that you know what the difference is between creepy and charming is how hot the guy is. If a guy is if a guy isn't the kind of guy a woman likes, then he's creepy. If a guy is the kind of guy she likes, then he's charming. Um this isn't quite true, but I do understand why that thinking exists. So if we don't think about guys for a second, instead we think about women. A really attractive woman can get away with a lot more bad behavior than a really ugly woman, right? So a, a really attractive woman can be uh, a bit catty, a bit bitchy, she can be a gossipy, she can be, you know, a pain in the butt, she can be high maintenance, and a lot of guys will put up with it because she's hot. Uh, whereas an unattractive woman, uh, I'm far less likely to be able to get away with it. It's the same thing for guys. Um, a lot of women will... A, a really hot guy can still be really creepy. I've seen it happen many, many times. But low-level amounts of creepiness or sleaziness is more readily overlooked by women uh, if the guy's someone she considers attractive than, than if it's a guy she considers to be unattractive. And so that's where this, this belief or this experience comes in because you'll see some guy who's good-looking get away with behavior you know that you could never get away with and you assume, well, that's all it comes down to. But it doesn't. As it turns out, there's actually a science to creepiness. And to start explaining the science of creepiness, I want to start by explaining something called the Uncanny Valley. Now, you may have heard of the Uncanny Valley before, but if you haven't, it works like this. Why is this image here you're looking at right now creepy? Why is this image also creepy? What about the image makes these both feel creepy to us? Well, as it turns out, the Uncanny Valley represents, it, it kind of started, it, 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 the research into Uncanny Valley began with research into robots and androids, right? And as it turns out, the more human uh, a robot looks, it's, uh, it reaches a point where it stops looking like a robot and starts looking more and more like a human, uncannily so. And yet, there's something not quite right about it that we find off-putting that makes us go, ugh, and gives us the, the heebie-jeebies, right, and the shivers. And that's known as the uncanny valley because it becomes so uncannily human and yet something back in our heads gives us a warning sign that, hey, something's wrong here. You can't trust it. This isn't really a human. Now, obviously, our brains didn't evolve to to have this uncanny valley because somehow our ancestors knew that be, there'd be androids that we'd have to worry about and maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger would come and tell us that he'd be back. Um, no. It arose because this this creepy um, reflex exists because basically it's it's when we see something that looks like it should be X scenario, ninety five percent so, but a little five percent looks like it's actually a Y scenario. Our brains fire off a warning sign, right? Something's wrong. Something's not a hundred percent, even though you can't put your finger on it. This is a warning sign to prevent backstabbing, for example. You know, in social settings where you've got um, a, a, another member from a visiting tribe or something like that, and it looks like they, they want to be your friend and hang out, but really there's something that doesn't quite fit right. This is, this is again, this is that creepy... It, it, we may use different words for it, but it's the same brain system that's firing off. Something isn't right. And so how does this relate to when we're picking up women? Because you're not planning to stab them in the back, I hope. <laughs> Maybe the wrong channel. Maybe go visit Murderers R Us or something. Anyway, um, it, it applies for this reason. Our brains are triggering when we when we sense something that, that can't be trusted, right? And so what happens is when a lot of guys are talking to women, they're battling a lot of things in their head. So they're having this whole emotional internal experience in their minds um, that's occurring but what they try to express, they try to express something that's very different what's from what's happening internally. So you may have a guy that's really, really nervous around a woman and he's totally uncomfortable with his sexuality and the concept of sex. He feels a lot of shame around it. And yet he's trying to pretend like it's not there and he's trying to sexually escalate and trying to push her forwards. And it reaches a point where the woman's like, oh, this feels creepy. This guy's all creepy. And then the poor guy who's already insecure around women feels 
horrible because nothing feels worse than having a, a, a woman, but any human looking at you with disgust is the one look we don't want to receive as humans. So to be looked at with disgust makes us feel even worse, which will make him even creepier the next time, which sucks. But what's happening is it's that is it's that disconnect between our internal space and what we're trying to express that so often can create creepiness for women when when guys are trying to talk to them. So I'll give you an example. Imagine a guy, this guy who I, who I, who I mentioned, imagine that what he's doing is he is trying to sexually escalate with his woman. This woman is saying all the right things, but what's happening is because he's nervous, he's breathing heavily. <sighs> Maybe not that extreme, but you get it, right? There's kind of that weird, heavy breathing going on. And at the same time, he's, just, he's licking his lips because he's nervous. But at the same time, he's got really bad eye contact. That's creepy already, isn't it? <laughs> I feel creepy just doing it. But now that's an over-exaggeration, but you can see all of a sudden, without meaning to, because he's trying to mask what he's feeling, he's coming across as creepy. And actually, creepy, when it comes to sexuality, there's another thing that, that, that can generate creepiness, and that's when you mix something that is sexual in nature with something that, for you, is positively non-sexual. In fact, sexual turn-off in nature. So if I show you a photo like this one, or a photo like this one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And so the, 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 the lip licking and the weird, awkward, heavy breathing, that is positively asexual or, uh, you know. And that's why also a guy who smells bad is like about 10 times more likely to be considered creepy. Because again, if he's doing a good job with sexual escalation, but he's got bad breath, it's really easy to cross that creepy valley channel. So what do you do? What do you do? What are you supposed to do? You know, if you're constantly worried about being creepy, I'll tell you this. Imagine that guy who's really nervous, breathing too heavily, poor eye contact, licking his lips. One thing that he could do right off the get-go would be to be a lot more genuine and honest with what he's experiencing. So the first step for him would be to say, you know what, I am really nervous because I, I've got to admit I don't have a lot of experience around women and the experience I do have has been pretty negative. Uh, and so, you know, I feel like I'm going to be a little bit awkward. Him saying this, what it does is it completely disarms the the creepy factor. Why? Because there is a reason given. Now he's saying what you're experiencing is this. And if that lines up, in other words, what he's, he's being honest about lines up with what she's experiencing, the creepy va disappears. Now, I know this isn't necessarily ideal. You don't want to be going over to every woman telling her all your problems. But the fact is that... First of all, you have a far better chance with a woman try if you're trying to sexually escalate with her and you're really nervous and you're being honest about that nervousness. You actually got a far better chance of being successful than if you come across as creepy. Pretty much no woman wants to have sex with creepy. So that's the big one. But the second thing is this. By being honest and genuine with what you're experiencing in that moment, that actually gives you the opportunity to work on that part of yourself. You see, if you're trying to mask your weaknesses around women like really heavily try to mask those behavioral issues that you've got when you're constantly masking them you're never working on the actual problem so it's never going to get better and of course as i mentioned before if a woman looks at you with disgust that will set you back that'll set your self-esteem backwards not forwards whereas if you if you if you tell her hey i'm feeling these things and the woman looks at you say with pity uh, and, you know, and she's, she'll generally be nice to you at that point, even if she's not sexually interested in you anymore. Your self-esteem isn't going to take the same knockback as it will if you cross that that creepy factor. You know, I think that I think that a lot of the dating advice out there is too heavy on the pretend to be something you're not channel. I think that there is a lot to be said for owning your insecurities, you know, saying, hey, I'm insecure. Hey, I'm nervous, but. I'm still, I still like you, right? This kind of a honesty um, is still very, it's still courageous. Women still respect it. And it, I've seen far more guys than you'd think be successful this way. You know, a lot of guys that I used to coach, I've had a lot of experiences where guys were so nervous and I tell them to go up to a woman and say, hey, I think you're really cute, but I'm really nervous. I haven't really done this before and I feel totally nervous coming and talking to you. When a guy does that, You'd be amazed how many guys I've seen successfully get phone numbers and even one night stands that way. Now, it won't work if he, he uses this line on, say, the most comfortable one in the club, the most confident. But if he goes and approaches just a, just a random woman who's not super confident herself, who's sort of maybe a bit introverted, you'd be amazed how accepting women are of this kind of um, expression of honestly what you're experiencing inside. And this really is the big difference between creepy and charming, is that someone who's charming 
gets away, like can say these things very directly and very honestly without triggering her creep response. It's a big part of what charming is. Now, it's also the, the art form of avoiding sleazy at the same time. Now, if you'd like to know the difference between charming and sleazy, which is kind of a different thing, let me know and I'll do a video about it below. But yeah, the big one is the creepy factor because I know so many guys are so petrified of coming across as creepy. They often don't talk to women in the first place. And if you just be honest and upfront with what you're experiencing, you're pretty much guaranteed to never be coming across as creepy at the very least. And that's the thing you most want to avoid. So if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below i um you know i'm trying to explore different topics that guys might find interesting so please let me know and as always if you liked it give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and of course check out some of my other videos over here i reckon if you liked this one you might just like those as well as always take care have a good week and i look forward to seeing you in my future videos